And we have a number of presentations, the first part, and then a panel discussion, the second part of our session. Uh, we hope to be done by around four o'clock, and we will get right going with a word of greeting from Eileen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Always a um, delightful activity to be right on the spot after lunch. I hope uh, that this will be so exciting that you forget that you're tired from lunch and that you just focus on those new things that will be discussed in a little while. Now, it's my pleasure to welcome you today on behalf of the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, SDC and also the Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs to this session called Scaling Up Sustainable Sanitation to the MENA Regional Chapter of the Susana Network. By adopting the Sustainable Development Goal number six on water and sanitation, the international community has recognized urgency to address water and sanitation globally. Although the adoption of this standalone goal was a great achievement in itself, it marks just the beginning of making sanitation visible, coherent, and to address the problems related to water and sanitation at adequate level. In order to achieve sustainable sanitation, and not to allow for sanitation to lag behind again, like it did with the Millennium Development Goals, we have to make sure that sanitation is addressed in public debates, in political prioritization, financial commitments and donor attention, and involving the private sector as a partner. So far, all of these constraints have caused a critical situation of, as you know, 2.4 billion people without access to basic sanitation services, 1.8 billion people drinking frequently contaminated water, and up to 90% of wastewater in developing countries being discharged directly into rivers, and lakes, and oceans. According to financial estimates, roughly 50 billion US dollars are needed on a yearly basis to achieve universal access to basic water sanitation and hygiene. Now, these facts, they tell us that we need to focus more than ever on universal access to safe sanitation and hygiene and to look beyond and expressly emphasize the importance of reducing health risks managing wastewater to protect water resources and ecosystems, and to make better use of wastewater as a resource. In light of its scarce conditions, this is also very critical for the region of the Middle East. In addition to high population growth and migration rates, and then coupled with increasing urbanization of the Arab region, exacerbates water scarcity and exerts pressure on the technical and financial elements of the water supply and wastewater system and demand the upgrade and expansion of existing infrastructure. Okay. If this, that's then I... Can you hear me? Okay. Is this bearable? It is? Can you hear me? Okay, then I continue. Okay, great. Ladies and gentlemen, with its global program on water, the Swiss Agency for Development has worked intensively to put water and sustainable sanitation high on the development center. We are positive using the momentum of the 2030 agenda to mobilize action and specifically push for sanitation, put it on the highest level of the political agenda. The Swiss Agency for Development is also committed to engage in the Middle East region 
and work with our partners on sanitation solutions that are sustainable and affordable. In order to achieve political prioritization and financial commitment, we need expertise, we need knowledge, and we need evidence to drive improvement process forward. In light of this, I'm particularly humbled and proud about the development in the translation of the Arabic version of the Compendium of Sustainization Systems and Technology, which will be launched right after the session at the Susanna booth. A few days ago, I heard a wise man saying that this translation marked the Sanitation Arab Spring, the kickoff of a new era of promoting sustainable sanitation in 22 Arabic countries. It will save millions of lives in the MENA region. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't agree more. And I already thank everyone involved in this for their hard work and for their passion. I want to use this opportunity to thank sincerely His Excellency, Secretary General, Engineer Iyad Dayat, from the Ministry of Water and Irrigation for his support. Now, in addition to the Arabic version of the compendium, we have two more knowledge products that will be presented and discussed here today. The Sustainable Sanitation Water Management Toolbooks in Humanitarian Crisis and the Compendium of Sanitation Technologies and in Emergencies. These knowledge products, they bring together expertise, they bring together networks and new thinking and they create a momentum to bring sustainable sanitation to the forefront of political prioritization and of development cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, to respond adequately to the water and sanitation crisis in the region, we need a common understanding of the challenges and of the opportunities, as well as a joint vision to move forward. Today is an important moment for us to learn about new developments and knowledge products and to deepen our networks and our thinking. In this sense, I wish all of you today an interesting and a meaningful exchange and a common vision to accelerate sustainable sanitation. The goal, as you know, is a water secure world for all and the path is certainly a rocky one but the mission is not impossible thank you okay thank you very much may i invite engineer khaldun hasan thank you Good afternoon, everybody. I think some people may say this man is jumping from here to there, give his speeches, and they might say, say oh, oh man, stop it. But I have to be with the friends always, especially when they are the GIZ. The first organization helped Aqua in creation Aqua. Aqua was a project within the GIS, GIZ, this time, it was GTZ at that time. Project hosted in Esqua, since at the regional umbrella, having three uh, countries members in Esqua. And from there, uh, we start working. And for three years, we got even financial support from GIZ. For payback, I have to be here. And we have a new friendship with Swiss agency and CWAS. Alan visited us our many times, and I think there is big opportunity to be there. The third reason, 
that I'm invited to be a member of this big alliance representing the Arab region. And when we talk about sanitation, we talk about health. We talk about access and connected to sewage system. We are talking about fighting uh, pollution. Therefore, I think we should be a part of this system. I don't have a speech, but I can say that, as you saw the, this uh, few hours ago, since the morning, that aqua day by day is improving and developing and going into many fields, many partnership. And aqua, as I said in the previous session before the break, is a big consultant with more than 1,100 expertise are our bank that we can depend on, that are the leaders of utilities and the experts of utilities in 108 Arab utilities, sorry, 106 from 18 countries. Therefore, I would like to thank you for being here. Now I can see some friends here from utilities, from Yemen, from Lebanon, from Egypt, and everybody is interested to know what's Susanna, this nice name. So sometimes when my colleague used to come, Susanna and Susani, one of the speakers, I got confused. But now I think I learned my lesson. Uh, hope the future for us, hope that we can work. The area needs a lot of building capacity in this issue. I think after this conference, they may, we may contact again and find, uh, uh, design a roadmap of, of, of building partnership. Uh, this is what can I say, and forgive me being brief, but I think I try to send the messages that everybody needs, we and you, to reach a mutual understanding uh, looking for the future also. And believe that uh, Aqua is a trusted friend and aligned for you. Once you need us, we'll be available with all the strength and capacity. Thank you. Thank you very much. In our next two short presentations, we will introduce you to the Sustainable Sanitation Alliance, the activities, and also the planned activities for the MENA region. Starting with the International Sustainable Sanitation Alliance. This is a global sanitation community. It's been in existence for 10 years now. We just celebrated 10 years ago, a month ago in Eschborn in Germany. It's an open network. It has members from all over the world. Um, it links national and regional experience with an international engaged community. And we aim at promoting innovative and best practice from around the world. Currently, we have about 8,000 individual members and over 289 partner organizations from all over the world. This can be NGOs, private companies, research institutes, uh, multilaterals, and so on. Just to give you an overview, these are members from around the world. Uh, we already have some members here in the region as well. I think 18 members in Jordan, 18 in Egypt. And we have about 7,800 news mail subscribers, uh, 4,800 Facebook users, Twitter followers, and 46,000 page views per month in the last year. The Susana network continues to grow and it continues to produce meaningful material. In money out, money and resources out of the out of the water sector and water circuit cycle. So to give uh, um, a, a brief groundwater protection and behavior change, and we have quite a number of documents, publications coming out of this work. And I'd like to draw your attention, especially to the library. The library on Susana Online has more than 2,000 publications. Some of them are shown below. But also the Susana Forum. The Susana Forum is an open forum where you can 
log on and get involved in ongoing international discussions on state of the art in the sanitation sector. So that was Susanna in a nutshell. Easy to become member and we have a secretariat that is run by the sector development in Eschborn at GIZ and we are very open to new members in the future. Thank you very much. This is, by the way, a pic picture that was drawn um, during the 10-year celebration in Eschborn in January. And then I'd like to ask Susanna Beaker to come and present the MENA chapter. Thank you, Christoph. And um, yeah, welcome everybody. I'm very happy to welcome you in the name of GIZ to this afternoon session. And i like to introduce you within the next um, five to ten minutes to the Susanna Regional Chapter MENA. Um, yes, so um, why do we have a uh, Regional Chapter MENA? So um, the main interest, so we have um, a worldwide network with Susanna. Um, and we've um, uh, realized that there's um, a lot of activities going on in the regions, that, um, but it's a, um, uh, a very widespread region. We have Arabic, we have French, we have very different activities, activities and different challenges to come. And the idea of this regional chapter, MENA, is to really to join forces, to bring these activities together um, and to interrelate the, the people behind those activities and publications and trainings and everything. So the idea is to bring together those resources um, which are already available or to adapt resources which can be of help for the MENA region by translating them, by bringing them um, uh, to, the, to the regional chapter and make them therefore accessible for the local stakeholders. Um, yes, and you heard the Susanna Network is an international platform uh, from more than 160 countries and it's the idea to, to link on the one hand the regional discussion within the region but also to link this regional discussion to the international um, uh, discourse in order to enable learnings from other regions, from other um, uh, countries and from other experiences worldwide. Um, so the regional exchange and trainings is mentioned in here um, very specifically. So there um, is a lot of capacity development going on and, um, in the region. And um, there are different stakeholders doing different trainings, also in doing trainings on the job to bring people in, in, the, um, in the topic of sanitation, bring in jobs and um, um, bring them to um, make their living on, on new development activities in here. So that's also a very important um, aspect which is um, to be addressed with the region chapter MENA. Yes, and finally, um, yeah, to convene knowledge from different stakeholders, which um, not, by now work in, in different silos, so they work in separate from each other, to bring those together, to have a common platform, um, and to, to increase the uh, exchange about this. So, um, yeah, the regional chapter of MENA, there's a website, which has been launched this morning, so it's really a draft thing we want to uh, introduce to you today and to have a discussion on the, on the contents. You can find the regional Regional Chapter MENA website um, under www.susanna.org. And then you find on the top, where it's now mentioned here in green, you can find the Regional Chapter MENA. And um, as you can see, it's um, by now, um, it's a bilingual part, so it's really the starting point to have it in English and in Arabic. Um, when we are going to develop it further, it will be also available in French. But for the starting point, we have started with English and Arabic. And you find a, um, a map. Uh, which is interactive. You can click on the map and find now, I've um, just clicked in here for Jordan, and you can find the activities going on already within that region. Um, and for example, for Jordan, you mentioned partners, active projects. Um, so the regional chapter MENA consists by now of five main columns, five main topics. So the first are the Susanna partners active in the region or even located in the region. The second are projects to be displayed here for the MENA region, like best practice um, aspect, like lessons learned, which can be um, others learn from those projects. Um, the MENA chapter library, um, Christoph Lüthi just introduced the Susanna library. Um, I will um, have some words on that a bit later. Um, we are um, having this um, MENA chapter training material section on the website. And finally, there will be the MENA chapter forum. So let me just have some brief um, topics to the only uh, to the um, different parts. So the profiles. 
Um, yes, as we are sharing it, I'm, uh, I was so, um, <laughs> so to, to bring the GIZ profile with me just to introduce you. So it's the opportunity to do a bit of um, knowledge sharing, networking, but also self-marketing for the partners, which are active um, or located in the region. So you can have a brief um, description of what the partner is doing, um, of where the, um, on the right hand side, where the um, partner is located. You have a contact person and contact details, and you can see where um, the, um, the, the company or the NGO, the partner is um, active worldwide. You can uh, read, um, if the partner is interested, you can um, put some or add some projects um, they are doing also worldwide, and you can have um, published resources. Uh, you can find those um, resources published in the Susanna Library, respectively in the MENA Chapter Library here. Yeah, the MENA Chapter Library. So we've heard there are more than 2,100 publications already. And our idea was to have a, um, a specific MENA Chapter Library. So it's a, it's a kind of filtering system.